Hi, come in. You seemed really upset. What's wrong? I mean, it's fine if you don't want to talk about it. Um, just go sit down, I'll, I'll find something for you to eat. Oh, and I'll turn that off really quick. Uh, one sec. So I have cinnamon toast crunch, corn pops, Lucky Charms. Who doesn't love late night cereal? I don't have any milk right now, so sorry about that. There's one. And two. <laughs> okay. Uh, here you go. Let me find something to watch. How about Nile Red? His videos are pretty relaxing. There's not like a bunch of background music or anything. Okay. Uh, yeah. A couple years ago, I After this one, we can watch the one where blood. he turns gloves into grape juice. <laughs> yeah, plastic gloves. Stronger and shatterproof. My main reason for making it though was. <sighs> All right, get over here. What, you were so adamant to hold me in the taxi? What's the matter now? Did you know you need eight hugs a day to have a healthy mind? <laughs> Forget about that. Hey, I just noticed that you need a hug. So get over here. <laughs> See, this isn't so bad. I like that sound. And I'll mention a few reasons why throughout the video. Instead, <laughs> I want to try something. And just a little bit of ASMR for you. Which was actually two years. Are you into that stuff? My first attempt. I have no idea how I didn't find this back then, but it seemed to avoid hmm. all the problems that I ran into. I don't know how people because could sit down and make it, that for so long. I needed was a piece of wood, or more specifically, a piece of balsa wood. What was nice was that I was able to find it at a local art store, and it but was it is already cool. made into a thin strip. For the thickness of the strip, I went with an eighth of an inch, which was about 3.2 millimeters. The first thing that I had to do was cut it using a knife, and I made some small squares that were about 2 centimeters by 2 centimeters. This size was kind of arbitrary, but I figured it was best to start small and then scale it up. Now, on a quick side note, a lot of papers, including the one that went viral, made the pieces a lot thinner, and they were usually at most one millimeter. I felt that that was way too thin, though, and at that point, it was getting closer to being paper than wood. Also, the last time that I did this, the pieces kind of fell apart, and I was worried that it was because I made them too thin. But anyway, made myself a smaller them, bowl. I dropped them onto a dish. Yeah, I ate I a while ago, but I didn't want you to feel left the out. Said to keep it at 105C for 24 <laughs> hours to get rid of any moisture in the wood. I think they were already pretty dry though, and when I pulled them out the next day, they looked exactly the same. Now, what I had to do next was chemically treat the wood and remove something called lignin, and I also had to bleach them white. In my last attempt, I pulled out the lignin using a boiling solution of sodium sulfite and sodium hydroxide, and then I bleached it using 30% hydrogen peroxide. That method seemed to work okay, but I didn't find that it was very efficient doing it in two steps. The method that I wanted to try, though, used sodium chloride, which was able to do both at the same time. Also, in general, it's a lot easier to buy sodium chloride. You don't mind if I give you some scratches, do you? Hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> at least here in Canada. I mean, it's the least I can do. Percent peroxide is controlled because it can be used to make explosives, and if you do manage to buy it, you can sometimes end up on a list. This is very different mm. than the sodium chloride, which has little to no regulation. And you can just buy it online. The reason that it's so available, though, is kind of unfortunate. It has a legitimate use as a disinfectant or cleaner, but more often than not, 
It sold as some sort of alternative medicine. People <laughs> used it to make something called Miracle Mineral Supplement, or MMS for short, and they claimed that it can cure everything from cancer to autism. The only problem, though, is that at least chemically, it's kind of similar to drinking dilute bleach. There's no real evidence that it does anything besides destroy your insides. So now, just like that other time when I bought cyanide almonds, I was a bit conflicted because I didn't want to support a market like this. However, it was on Amazon, and it was by far the cheapest and easiest way to get it. So... When it eventually arrived, I was able to put together my wood treating solution. According to the paper, I had to make a one weight percent sodium chloride with acetate buffer solution with a pH of 4.6 at 80 C. At first glance, this kind of seemed like a complicated and maybe hard thing to do, but it was actually so relatively tired. simple. To put it together, I started by adding 125 mils of water, followed by 1.67 grams of sodium acetate and 1.15 mils <laughs> of acetic acid. Oh, uh, acid. let me take your bowl first. I then turned on the stirring, and when all this had dissolved, I was already almost done. I only had one more ingredient to add, which was 1.3 grams of the sodium chloride. When all of this had also dissolved, I and I'm back. And waited for it to get right, to about here. ADC. As it warmed up, the acetic acid was slowly reacting with the sodium chloride and releasing chlorous acid, which quickly broke down into chlorine dioxide. When it eventually got to ADC, I turned off the stirring and I dropped in the pieces of wood. Wait, don't worry about it. I did my best to spread them out. We have absolutely nothing to worry about there tonight. There just wasn't enough space. So, I poured everything into a bigger beaker. I don't know what's troubling you, but you can get... You can... You can forget about it right now. I got you. As it sat there, the chlorine dioxide solution was attacking and dissolving one of the major components of the wood called lignin. In general, wood is around 25% lignin, which is kind of like a glue that holds the wood fibers together. By taking it away, I was making the wood more porous, and I was opening up the space between the wood fibers. I was also getting rid of the natural yellow color that wood has, which mostly comes from the lignin. According to the paper, this process should bring the lignin content down from the 25% that I mentioned before to only about 3%. What I was supposed to be left with was mostly cellulose and hemicellulose, which were naturally colorless. About seven hours later, they eventually looked almost completely white, and I felt that it was done. So, I pulled them all out, and I dropped them into some distilled water. I then left them overnight, for all the chemicals to slowly diffuse out. The next day, I filled another bowl with 100% ethanol, and I transferred them all over. I waited another day, and then I did the exact same thing with a 50-50 mixture of ethanol and acetone, and then with pure acetone. As far as I know, the paper doesn't really go into detail as to why all these solvent washings have to be done, but I think the major reason is to just get rid of the water. After a few days of mostly waiting, I was eventually left with some little dry pieces of wood, which were hopefully close to lignin free. They clearly still weren't transparent though, and that was because I still had one major step to do, which was infuse them with plastic. However, before doing that, I took a closer look at one of them. The first thing that I tried was bending it to see how strong it was. The last time I did this, the pieces all became super soft and bendy, and I was kind of expecting the same thing to happen. However, they were actually still pretty tough and they felt similar to before the treatment. I'm not exactly sure whether this was because I used balsa this time, or if it was because of the different process. My opinion, though, is that it was probably a combination of the two. Either way, it was a pleasant surprise, and it meant that it was probably possible to safely make pieces that were both thinner and larger. Something else that I noticed 
was that even though they weren't exactly <laughs> transparent, they were definitely more transparent than regular would. It was still way too hazy to see any details through it, but it was vaguely possible to see something. But anyway, it was now time to try, and hopefully, hmm? make it completely see-through. To do this, as I mentioned yeah, you can, before, you can turn around if that's not weird for you. Sort of I don't mind. Effect. And the last time that I did this, I used an epoxy resin. There were at least a few things, though, that I didn't like about the epoxy. The first was that it was a two-part mixture, and the moment the two parts were mixed together, they would start to react. You're so sleepy. It gave me a limited time to work on it before it started to harden, and I found that this made things really rushed, and it was hard to do a good job. The second, and probably more important reason, is that epoxy has a tendency to turn yellow. This is often because of exposure to UV light, but I kept mine in a cupboard, and it still somehow happened. What I did find interesting, though, was that a lot of papers on transparent wood used epoxy, including the one that recently went viral. In fact, they often used the exact same stuff that I used. In my opinion, though, this was a major problem, especially considering that transparent wood is supposed to be a potential replacement for glass windows. Windows are constantly exposed to the UV and sunlight, and if epoxy were used, you'd probably end up with a nasty yellow window. This was one major thing that I liked about the paper that I decided to follow. They didn't go with epoxy, and they instead went with something called methyl methacrylate, or MMA for short. When this polymerized, it would make acrylic, also known as plexiglass, and it didn't have the same yellowing issue. Its polymerization was also triggered by heating it, and this meant that I could actually choose when I wanted it to harden. This all sounded pretty good to me, so I ordered some methyl methacrylate, as well as an initiator called AIVX. Unfortunately, I couldn't just add them both directly to the wood, and I first had to partially polymerize the MMA. To do this, I started by adding a very small amount of the initiator. After that, I poured in about 50 mils of the methyl methacrylate, and I dropped in a stir bar. I then turned on the stirring, and when everything had dissolved, I moved the flask to a hot water bath. When the temperature got above about 40 C, the initiator was supposed to start breaking down and releasing free radicals. These free radicals would then attack a molecule of MMA, which would turn into a more reactive form, which could attack another molecule of MMA. 